chapter two, we focused mainly on, in fact, pretty much all the time on, uh, situations involving equations, where you had two expressions that were equal to one another. In chapter three, we turn our focus to inequalities, prefix in, meaning not, equal. Um, and this is, these are things that you've done before. Um, if you think about what an inequality is, it's greater than or less than. It's a comparison of two quantities to see which one is larger, which one is smaller. So learning target for today is pretty uh, basic. Our learning target for today is to uh, graph and write inequalities. Pause the video a second, make sure you get that written down. Also, uh, while you're pausing it, go ahead and try the three warm-up questions. So hit pause. When you're ready to go over the answers to the warm-up, go ahead and hit play again. So if we look at these three, oops, if we look at these three uh, inequalities here, starting with negative three and negative five, well, uh, negative three is larger than negative five because it's closer to zero. So we put a greater than sign there. You might have heard of like the alligator eats the larger number, Pac-Man eats the larger number. Those are two two ways that we can uh, remember uh, which one is bigger and remember which way the um, inequality sign goes. Next question, negative 1 versus 0. Well, 0 is larger. So we put the inequality sign that way. This would read, if we read left to right, negative 1 is less than 0. It's important to note you can read it the other way, say 0 is greater than negative 1, but typically uh, we read left to right. 8 fifteenths and 5 ninths. Well, you know from your work with fractions that in order to compare fractions, you have to get common denominators. Uh, so if I look at 15 and 9, I'm just realizing, okay, so we can do 45. If I multiply this by 3 and this by 3, I get 24 40 fifths, and this by 5 and this by 5, and I get 25 40 fifths. Well, 24 40 fifths is less than 25 40 fifths, so therefore 8 fifteenths is less than 5 ninths. So that's just the basics for inequalities. Um, how do solutions for an inequality differ from solutions for an equation? Well, if you remember, solutions for an equation were the value that made the inequality true. Well, when we, or that made the equation true, and it was singular uh, whenever we had one variable. You have two variables, as we, look, we learned in the last lesson of um, chapter one, when you have two variables, you end up with two parts to your solution. There can be an infinite number, number of solutions. So same thing is kind of true here with, uh, with inequalities. Um, with inequalities, there are multiple values that could work. Um, so make sure you get those two blanks filled in there. Uh, and up above, you can see just a silly little example of how inequality signs work. I actually uh, had to make a, a change to the last one. Uh, this symbol here, this one is wrong, so make sure you change this, uh, flip those around. Whoever made this worksheet was incorrect. Uh, just talking about how these are read. Here, this one would have been written by a Penn State fan, because this would say Penn State is greater than Pitt. This is the greater than symbol right here. Right here, this is saying Pitt is less than or equal to OSU, which could be Ohio State or Oklahoma State, depending on what part of the country you're from. This is the less than, but you notice that little extra line underneath there? Remember that from last year? That's the less than or equal to sign. And then off to this side here, you have Ohio State is less than Penn State. So whoever made this Seems like they, uh, they liked Ohio State a little bit more than they liked Pitt, but not as much as they liked Penn State. So this symbol here is the just straight up less than. Notice no line underneath, so it does not include the equal to. So what they're saying here is Pitt is either worse than or equal to Ohio State, as far as this person who made this worksheet is concerned. And over here, this is the one I had to fix. Uh, this is the greater than or equal to and this is my opinion, so of course it's right, being a Notre Dame fan. Uh, this is read greater than or equal to. Okay, so those are the four inequality symbols. And again, 
The solution to those is basically any value that will make this work. So how would we describe this in words? 2p is greater than 8. Well, the solution for this would be any value that would make the statement true. Any values for p that I could plug in. Okay, so describe the solutions. Any values for the variable p that will make this statement true. So that's what the uh, that's what that would look like, kind of in our own words here. Let me make, see if I can make that a little bigger for us. Whoop. Uh, come on. There we go. Okay, let's move on. Now, a problem presents itself here. Because with equations, we can just say, like let's say this was 2p equals 8. Well, how many solutions are there? Well, just one, right? p equals 4. And we can list all the solutions. The problem with this one, where it's 2p is greater than 8, is that there's a lot of different numbers I could plug in here. I could plug in, uh, I could plug in five. Two times five is greater than eight. I could plug in six, I could plug in seven, I could plug in eight. Basically, I could plug in anything that's larger than four. If I put four in, two times four is eight, and eight is not greater than eight. So I can plug in an infinite number of numbers here. So the problem is, in order to graph, in order to show all the solutions or to talk about all the solutions we can use an inequality symbol but i can't show them unless i have some kind of picture that represents and that's what graphs are in order to show all the solutions for this 2p is greater than 8 i need a picture that is infinite and what kind of picture from geometry is infinite well a line and since we're talking about numbers we may as well use a line that has numbers on it aka the number line Okay, so we're going to use a number line to show all of the solutions for these inequalities. Okay, so here's our four different symbols. Okay, so this symbol here, this is the less than or greater than. Let me put my size back down so I make sure I have enough room. Less than, greater than. Notice... If it's less than or greater than, it's just like we were talking about up here about uh, 2p is greater than 8. If it's less than or greater than, like that one is just greater than, we aren't including that number there. So like if I solve this thing, okay, which we're going to get into here in a future lesson, I would have p is greater than 4 because I would just divide both sides by 2. Again, you probably remember that. Uh, you were doing that as early as 6th grade. Some of you were. Um, I'm including all the numbers that are more than, more than or greater than 4, but I'm not including 4 itself. So if I put that on a number line, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here, but it's okay, we're just going to go with it. So let's say I got a number line, okay, and here's 4. And over here I got 5, 6, down here I got 3, I got 2. All the numbers that work are up here above 4, right? All the ones that don't work are down here below 4, right here, okay? So the ones above work, the ones below don't. Well, what about right here at 4? What can I do? Well, I can't really include that as part of my graph because it's not a solution. Well, what we use is a dot. I can do that better. Hang on a second. A dot, but we just don't fill it in. So not filling it in, we call that an open dot. Not filling it in sim signifies, it's a symbol that says we're including all the numbers greater than 4, but not 4 itself. So 4.0000001, right, gets included, works for this, is a solution, it makes it true, 
but four does not make it true. So we've got an open dot. Well then, again, to show all the solutions more than four, we've got to use an array. So we'll use array to show all the solutions that are more than four. So put a, the, the symbol we're going to use here to represent solutions for inequalities are, uh, are number lines, and we'll put array on it. Okay? Uh, what if we change the problem? What if we put this little line? Remember we said these little line underneath? That means less than or equal to equal to and greater than or equal to. So the same thing happens as far as um, as far as the the dot uh, or as far as the the ray goes, which way the ray goes. Um, but what's different here is now that we now that we are saying it's equal to, we close the dot up, we fill the dot in. Okay, we're gonna take a look at um, uh, what this looks like on the number line. But just to kind of give you an idea here of um, how this looks, um, just to give you an idea of how to kind of remember what kind of dot to use, uh, if you look, basically, it's whether or not it's equal to or not. Okay, so ways to remember. So uh, one way, whoops, get out of here real quick. One way we can remember, this down here, okay. If it's, quote, equal to, then fill the dot in. If it's just greater than or less than, leave it open, okay? So if no line underneath, then leave it open. So now we're going to look at a couple example problems. So um, on this page of your notes here, all right, so we have three, uh, three questions here. We're going to graph them on the number line. You should be able to tell right away just by looking at these whether or not it's going to be open or closed. So I've got x, you notice here, this is x is less than 5. There's no sign underneath, it should, or there's no equal sign underneath. So that would mean x is everything bigger than 5. So uh, the way I always tell people to do this, just put 5 right there in the middle, and then number a couple on either side. And we should know right away, we can tell right away, that this is an open dot. There's an open dot at 5. It's open because x is anything that is less than 5, okay? Um, so how do we know which way the arrow goes? Well, the arrow is going to go toward numbers that are less than 5. Another way you can figure that out is by taking test points, one from either side of the dot. So let's say I took 3 and I took 6. If I take 3 and plug it in, I have... I have uh, numbers, all, notice this works. If I take three and plug it in, three is less than five, that works. If I take six and plug it in though, six is not less than five, it does not work. Remember, this graph is to show all of the solutions to the inequality, all the things that make it true. So that means that all the numbers to the left of five work, all the numbers to the right of five don't. So the ray is gonna go through all the numbers that work because the ray goes through all the solutions. Okay, so we've got our end point there is at five. It's open because it's not equal to. All right, number two. I'm gonna put a dot at negative three. Be careful when you number with negatives. Remember, it goes negative two, negative one, zero. And this side is negative four. I have a lot of people who do negative three, negative four, negative five. That's wrong. It doesn't go like that. Number it correctly. Okay, uh, 
notice how this says this has the little line underneath. So that means we're including negative 3. Negative 3 is a solution. So I'm going to put a dot, and I'm going to fill it in. Now I've got to figure out which way the ray goes. Say A is greater than negative 3. So I could take negative 2 and plug that in, and I can take negative 4. Notice how I just took 1 on either side. Well, which of these is true? Negative 4 is lower than negative 3. Negative 2 is greater than, so we go this way. A lot of people say, oh, just follow the way that the, uh, the, the little inequality sign is pointing. Well, that's great until you get to problems like number 3. Because if you did that, we would say, well, the ray is going to go that way. But watch what happens. Okay, so we got, an, we got a closed dot at negative 1.5. Well, negative 1.5 is in between negative 2 and negative 1. So I'm going to go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. Negative 1.5. Got a closed dot. So I put my dot halfway between negative 1 and negative 2. Now, take some test points here. I'm going to plug in negative 3 and 0 for y. And notice how y is on the right. So negative 1.5, and I'm going to put negative 3 in, and I'm going to put this in. Which of those is correct? Now remember, for the people who say, oh, you just follow the way it's pointing, they would have put the line going this way. But look at what this says. Is negative 1.5 less than negative 3? No, it's more than negative 3 because it's closer to 0. Notice this one is true. That means the ray should be going towards 0 because 0 makes the statement true. It is a solution. So uh, following the direction of the, uh, the inequality sign is, is fine until you realize that that only works when the uh, variable is on the left, and it doesn't have to be on the left. Okay, graph each number, each inequality on the number line. Well, to graph these, I can't graph this yet. In order to graph these, I've got to get it so that there's a variable. Let me get my laser here. There's one variable, and there's one number, okay? And I've got the variable over here and the number over here. So i got to do a little bit of math right here. i got to figure out the answer to this. Well, to, for here, I've just got to follow order of operations. I've got parentheses, and I've got multiplication. So within the parentheses, i got 5 minus 8, which is negative 3. So this is 4 times negative 3, and d is greater than that. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So right away, we should be able to tell, hey, open dot, because it's greater than. It's not equal to. So I'm going to draw myself a little number line here. You use different colors. And you don't have to go crazy with the tick marks. Just try to make sure they're all the same size. I'll put negative 12 in the middle here. That means negative 11 and negative 10 would go here, negative 13, negative 14 out this way. Uh, negative 12, we've got an open dot on negative 12. So I don't fill it in. It says, says D is greater than negative 12. So let's try putting in negative 10 and negative 14. Nope, that doesn't work. Negative 14 is less than. This says negative 14 is greater than. Uh, if I put negative 10 in, though, negative 10 is greater than negative 12. So that means negative 10 is a solution. i got to go that away. Okay, next up. On here, this is like the uh, what's inside the square root symbol. Okay, remember, this is the square root of 24 plus 12. i got to do, I'm not taking the square root of 24. I'm not taking the square root of 12. I'm taking the square root of the sum. So I've got g is less than the square root of 36. Remember, the square root says, what number do I multiply by itself that equals 36? And that would be 6. Okay, so g is less than 6. I'll put 6, and I'll put 7 over here, 5 over here. Don't need to do more than that. That's enough. This is an open dot at 6. So notice solving it tells us where that boundary line is. Solving it tells us, and we're going to get into that more detail in the next couple videos. Solving it tells us where to put the dot, or, or evaluating in this case. The, whether it's less than or, or equal to, if it's equal to, that tells us what type of dot to put. And then we can determine from there which way the inequality symbol goes. It says g is less than 6. If I put 5 in, it works. If I put 7 in, it does not. So I'll go through 5. Okay. These three. 
we should be able to write inequalities just looking at the graph here. So for these, for these, uh, the way you start these, just pick a variable. So I'll just use x. Very original, I know. Um, notice where x is, like I was saying. Where the dot is located uh, is the, the number in our inequality here. So the dot's at negative 1. Now, remember, the ray is all the values for x. So the ray is going out this way. Notice these are all the numbers that are more than negative 1. So this would be a greater than sign. Now, the only other question we have to ask is, are we including negative 1? And you notice the dot is filled in. That means negative 1 is being included as a solution for x. So x isn't just everything more than 1. x is everything more and including negative 1. It's inclusive. Okay, going to the next one. We've got our variable, okay, and that's going to be represented by everything shaded in here. And that dot is at 1. Notice it's not filled in, so this is not going to be an or equal to situation. Notice how x is everything to the left of 1, everything less than 1. And the last one, here the dot is at 0. Notice how x is everything less than 0, and because it's a filled in dot, it's less than or equal to. All right, let's go to the next page. So we've got some three very quick applications. Uh, this is where we get into writing and graphing the inequality. When you write an equation or an inequality, remember that the variable is what you don't know. Algebra literally means, it's two words uh, from Arabic, algebra, the unknown. Uh, so when, what we don't know is our variable here. So if we look at the Route 79 question here, what could be changing? Well, what could be changing is how fast you're driving. The speed limit's 55. That doesn't mean you're driving 55, especially if it's me. Uh, so you could be going more than 55, less than 55, or exactly 55. Well, if you're going the speed limit, because describing the situation here, the situation is about going the speed limit. Uh, if, you're, if, you're going, if you're going the speed limit, that means you're not exceeding 55 miles an hour. So x, the limit, is 55. Well, if you're going the speed limit, you are not exceeding that. You're not going more than, you're going less than. Could you be going 55 is the next question. Well, yeah, you could be going 55 and still be within the limits of the law. So not only is x everything less than 55, x is everything less than 55 and equal to 55. Next, some highways have a minimum speed as well. Uh, so, if the minimum speed is 40, oh, sorry, we have to graph the last one. Okay, so if it's less than or equal to, well, then my dot's going to go at 55. I got 54 over here. I got 56 over here. We're going to do a closed dot because, we, like I said, we're including 55. And our speed should be everything less than 55. Okay. Okay, uh, some highways, and you've probably been on these, have a minimum speed as well. Um, because on a lot of these highways, if you're going slower than a, that minimum speed, it's, not, it's, it's just as unsafe as going fast is. In some cases, even more unsafe. Um, so the minimum speed is 40, and the maximum speed is 55. You construct a graph to, to describe this real-world situation. So we need two numbers on our graph here. We need 40 and we need 55. So I'm going to draw a number line here. I'll put 40 down here. And i got to get up to 55. Good intervals to go by, probably fives. So 40, 45, 50, 55. Okay? For the speed limit, I could be going 55 and still be okay. So we already talked about how that's going to go this way, right? The minimum speed of 40, okay, I could be going 40 and still be safe as well. But I have to be going more than 40. Look where these two arrows are going. Well, this arrow from the left is going to go this way, but it can't go past 55, right? 
and this one from the from the right can't go past 40. I can't go lower than 40. So think of what's going to have. These aren't actually rays because they can't go forever in one direction. So I should erase my little arrows there. And what's happening here is they approach each other, but they end at the dot. So this is a situation that forms a line segment here. Okay. All right. Here's one for you to try on your own. So go ahead and read the problem, pause the video, and then hit resume when you're ready. All right, so our variable here is the, the weight of the individual uh, crew member. So that's going to be X. It says they can weigh no more than 165. No more than. So 165 is our, our limit here, our number that, that X kind of hinges on. Think about it this way. If I put the, the symbol this way, this says X is more than 165. That would mean people could be like 200 pounds. Well, that's no good. That would be too heavy for the boat. We need them to be less than 165. Notice it says no more than. It's not putting a restriction on being 165. So this means X is less than or equal to 165, which right away tells us close dot. Change colors here. 165 is in the middle. We got 166 on this side, 164 on this side. I'll put my closed dot at 165. And then your weight as a member of the crew team is everything less than 165. So that's it on writing and graphing inequalities. We did some word problems. We talked about how to look at a number line and tell what the inequality was. We talked about how to actually identify what the dot was and which way the arrow goes. Go ahead and try your homework now. And when you're done with that, go ahead and move on to the next lesson.